Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, hey, hey, good morning, everybody. Wow, we what an amazing crowd. You guys look terrific. We got almost 500 folk in here, and they're the best people in all the world, right? That's right. I'll tell you what, I have some great news for you. You're in the right place at the right time. Surrounded by the right people, the best of the best, the cream of the crop. And you know what? That's pretty important because the worst thing that can happen is to get around the wrong people. And the best thing can happen is to get around people that want you to win. And that's where we are today. And I want you to win. And here's the thing. What we find out today, the reason why you're in the right place at the right time, we are discovering, we are bringing out, and we are making happen the real you. And I had you on this last time. I had you put some notes on, sticky notes on your computer and all that. With just one question, who are you? And I'm hoping you've been answering the question. So the real you, I want you to become the real you. So who are you anyway? Amazing, inspiring, Alright, that was pretty good. I, I have to admit, pretty good. I, I do hope you notice there is kind of a cheat sheet. <laughs> just in case you get a little shaky on the answer to make sure you get it in boy. And you know, you are right. I know some of you are already starting out already. Some of you are already thinking, well, no, you know, I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say anything. I make you say Because the truth of the matter is you say all kinds of stuff about you. You've said lots of things. You've used a lot of words to describe you, how you're feeling and how you're doing. But very few times probably have you described yourself as amazing and inspiring and unstoppable. And it's high time you start using the right words and you say some things sometimes and today I make you do it where you say some things that you need to say about you because you really are amazing you really are inspiring and you need to say it because by the way the word became flesh now what does that mean what you say becomes real the real you so who are you amazing Right. Now, this morning, I've got a question for you. Are you living in a maze or are you living in amazing? Now, here's the deal. You guys know what a maze is, right? You've seen a maze. You know what a maze is. A maze has lots of walls in it. And by the way, everybody in life has been thrown into a maze. There isn't any of us who don't know what a maze is. There isn't any of us who don't know what it's like to be in a maze. The question isn't, have you been put into a maze? The question is, are you living in a maze or are you living in amazing? Now let me just describe for us for a minute life in a maze and I think that you will recognize it life in a maze means every time you turn around you run into another wall this is 2010 2010 is going to be great we're going to make it happen all kinds of good things and I'm telling you even in the first week oh rats you go to the office and you find out your CA has been stealing from you and she's been here a long time and she's taking all the money and you go wow duh, duh. it's a wall and then what happens? Well, you know, you leave there and you go home and you get a call from your daughter and your daughter says, I can't take it anymore, I'm leaving my husband. Oh, wow. What is that? It's a wall. It's a real wall. And boy, sometimes you run into these walls and it hurts, doesn't it? Sometimes these walls even draw blood, you know. And then, boy, then you go back to work and, and uh, oh, oh, no, what's happened? Your computer has crashed. And, and, oh, no, oh, no, now we know the computers are down, the software, and we're going to do this, and we're going to start over. And then you go get in your car, and summer starting, and the air conditioning's broke, and you need four tires, four new tires. Oh, they're bald, bald tires. How many of you understand these walls I'm talking about? How many of you ever run into a wall before? You, you, you recognize the thud of the wall. And boy, you know, pretty soon it just seems like every time you turn around, you run into another wall. You know, there's, oh, oh, it's a wall. I hit the wall. And pretty soon you all know, say, hey, 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 how you doing? And they immediately start describing 
the wall. And, and you know, interestingly enough is that pretty soon, you know, you hit this wall and you keep hitting another wall and, and you just become a wall expert. And pretty soon all you do is study the wall and you know the wall and, and, and you go over the wall and you're looking at the wall all the time and you just go up to the wall and you say, yeah, but there it is. That It's a wall is what it is. There's a wall here. Well, have you seen? What do you mean how am I doing? There's a wall here. I'm up against the... You ever heard the phrase? And it's life in a maze. And to tell you the truth... The wall is real. And there's no way I'm going to tell you that that isn't a real wall. And, I, and there's no way I'm going to tell you that it doesn't hurt to run into the wall. And there's real walls with real pains and real hurts that really does draw blood sometimes. It's one wall sometimes after another. And how do you get the feeling then? Pretty soon you get the feeling like you can't get out. That life is just a maze and everything. Well, why even turn the corner? Why go around this wall? When I try to go around this wall, I'm just going to run into another wall. There's a, there's a wall. And life becomes full of walls, one after the other. And pretty soon you just can't see far ahead. You can't see any farther than just this wall that's stuck right in front of you. And you know, why would I try to do anything else? Why would I try to go anywhere else? I can't pay the bills I've got now. And you see this financial wall in front of you and the financial wall seems to be so big it's like well there's no sense in me trying to go somewhere else because there's a wall here and this financial wall is killing me and there are many chiropractors then who across the country who are even considering getting out of chiropractic and sometimes wish that they could get out of chiropractic and sometimes their spouse wishes that they could why don't you just get out and why don't you go get a job and let's try to make some money now here's the deal. There is not even one person in here that does not understand the wall. Every one of us have run into the wall more than once. The question is whether or not it's weekly or monthly or sometimes hourly. And rats, pretty soon you get scared to go outside, don't you? How many times have you ever said, even when it comes to bills, I don't even want to go to the mailbox? You know, I don't want to pick up the mail. Oh, rats, because there's just going to be more bills. We might say another wall. Now, you get to feeling scared. When does it end? And you know what your response is? You know how you start responding to the wall? You know how you start responding to life in a maze? The response becomes you just don't want to do anything. You just want to sit down. You just want to go into hibernation. You know, you figure, if I don't move, I won't run into another wall. I'll just try to stay safe. Go nowhere. Let's just not do anything. Let's not try anything. Let's not go for anything. Let's just, let's just try to survive this deal. Let's just try to stay alive. And the truth of the matter is, you go into hibernation. And when you go into hibernation, here's what happens. You don't run into the wall, but you don't go anywhere either. You choose to lose and you hit the mark. You succeed at it. You choose life with no victory to have a life with no pain. And when you go into hibernation, here's the problem. The truth is it doesn't even work because you usually decline anyway. You can't economize yourself into prosperity. Now, I don't know where you're at, but I know that all of us are faced with life in a maze. And you can, all of us, although all of us have been put in a maze before, most people choose to live life in a maze. But there is another life. And guess where that is? That's the amazing now, only 0.01% choose to live there. Very few people choose to live in a maze. Now, you've got to ask yourself, why isn't everybody in amazing? Is amazing luck? Is amazing, which I like to think it is, is amazing skill? Is amazing brains? Is amazing, and this is what I kind of think it is, good looks? No, 
Nah. The cold hard facts are you can be ugly and live an amazing. This is good news for some of you. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, hey. hey man, you can be you can be dumb and live an amazing. You don't have to be magna cum laude. Is this good? So how do you become then, Keith? If you you know, shoot, if you can be ugly and live an amazing. And by the way, you can be good looking and live in a maze. So how do you live in amazing? What's the difference? What's the difference in life in a maze and life in amazing? To live in amazing, this is what you do. Living amazing is a choice. And only 0.01% of the population chooses to do this. And what is living amazing? Living amazing are those people, the people who live amazing are people who choose to shoot for the moon. You say, oh rats, Keith, you know, I've heard that phrase, it doesn't mean anything. Does it? No, I'm telling you, I'm not asking you if you've heard the phrase, I'm asking you, is that where you live? Are you... Not have you heard of it, but are you today, right now, are you shooting for the moon? Is that how you describe you? Is that how you would describe what you're doing right now? I'm shooting for the moon. By the way, I want everybody to say that. Everybody say, I'm shooting for the moon. Say that. I'm shooting for the moon. Okay, that sounds a little Midwestern. We need some Southern drawl in this thing. It's I'm shooting, real, real O, shooting, I'm shooting, and there's no O in four, it's fur. I'm shooting for the moon. Try that. I'm shooting for the moon. That's better. See, that was better. Now see, once you start, now see, there's very few people who are shooting for the moon. Almost nobody's shooting for the moon. Most everybody is not shooting for the moon. Shoot, no, they're shooting for where they are. There's very few people who choose to shoot for the moon. Now, what does it mean to shoot for the moon? It means to shoot for the dream, the bigger than you, the impossible, the way out of your reach, the can't get there from here. It is the most powerful secret in the world. All you got to do is choose to live amazing, which is I'm shooting for the moon. And as soon as you do, man, you lift yourself above the 99%. Is that awesome or what? As a country, we even proved it. As a country, the president stood up and said, we're shooting for the moon. And we're going to get there within 10 years. Do you remember? Now, man, you got to realize at the time he said we're shooting for the moon, the moon was impossible. In the first place, it was a long ways off. In the second place, there's no air up there. There's no oxygen. You can't breathe on the moon. Something else that I think is an obstacle. There's no gravity. How are you going to walk on the moon when there's nothing to hold you down and you can't breathe? And how do you get there from here? It's a long ways off. I would have called it impossible. Within ten years, we were there. And Neil Armstrong... And Buzz Aldrin stepped on the moon within 10 years where you can't breathe and where there is no gravity. It was impossible and they did it. Is that amazing or what? And rats, is it that, is it that those guys were so smart? Is it that those guys were so talented? Is it those guys were so good looking? Rats, did you see Buzz Aldrin dance? <laughs> Not much amazing about the guy. Except he walked on the moon. Everybody get it? So, what are you shooting for? Yeah. So everybody said, I'm shooting for (laughs) That was good. I heard that shooting. I liked it. That was good. That is right, bucko. And you just transformed yourself somewhere because most people just shoot for the ground and hit it. Not hard to shoot for the ground. Anybody can do it. Why is it that so few people shoot for the moon? And why is it that what I'm telling you is so weird? One reason is it's not taught like in the schools. You're not encouraged to shoot for the moon. 
You're not encouraged to go for the impossible. Why? Because rats, nobody's shooting for the moon. How can they encourage you to do something that they're not doing? You look around, most of your friends, are they shooting for the moon? Take a look at your community and your neighborhood. Are they shooting for the moon? Shoot, no. Shoot, you. They're not shooting for the moon. They're shooting for survival. They're shooting to make it. And they choose to live life in a maze instead of amazing. And they will tell you all about the wall. How many of you have friends that talk about the wall? How many of you have family that talk about the wall? Ah, oh, rats. How many of you are married to the wall? Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, my husband, he's a wall, I'm telling you. Well, it's like talking to the wall. <laughs> well, rats, here's the part. You and I both know that the wall is real. But there's something else I need to introduce to you this morning. So is the moon. That's the good part. I don't have to prove that the wall isn't real. I need to prove to you that so is the moon real. I don't know if you've checked it out, but it's there. The moon is there just like the wall is there. The question isn't which one is real. The question is which one are you shooting for? Are you shooting for the wall or are you shooting for the moon? At this last top flight, we were in Aspen, Colorado. Home of Dumb and Dumber, Aspen. Where the beer flows like wine. <laughs> and my, and it's my favorite movie, so you have to pardon me. As soon as I get off on it, rats, every quote in the world, here it comes. So you're saying I got a chance. That's right. <laughs> One in a million. Anyway. We went skeet shooting in Aspen. My son Kyle and David Sagan and I, we went skeet shooting. How many of you, by the way, how many of you ever been skeet shooting? Well, you know, rats. Interesting thing about skeet shooting. I'd never been skeet shooting until we went there in Aspen. And, and we hired ourselves a professional coach to take us skeet shooting. Now, here's, here's a couple of, I'll, I'll refer to it kind of sometimes during the day, but see, I'm telling you, for those of you who haven't been skeet shooting, there's a reason why you haven't been skeet shooting, and there's a reason why I haven't been skeet shooting. It's because you just don't wake up and accidentally go skeet shooting. You know, you're not just outside one day and say, well, rats, there goes one of those skeet. I think I'll shoot that sucker. Nobody just wakes up and then there's some skeet. The only way you go skeet and shooting is to make it part of the plan. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go skeet shooting. you got to go skeet shooting. You just don't accidentally end up shooting skeet. Now the deal is, you guys, nobody, and I want you to get this, nobody just accidentally hits the moon. I'm telling you, Neil Armstrong didn't get on there and say, Rats, is this the moon? Who'd have thought we'd be here? He worked for the moon. He had his eyes set on the moon. He planned on walking on the moon. It became the ten-year goal to walk on the moon. He didn't just wake up one morning and say, rats, I accidentally landed on the moon. He was shooting for the moon. Does everybody get the difference? I went skeet shooting because I made it part of the plan to go skeet shooting. You don't just accidentally shoot skeet. you got to decide you're going to shoot some skeet. Now, what I'm asking you is this. What are you shooting for? Honestly, what is your life designed for? Why are you on this planet? What is your purpose? And when you wake up in the morning, which by the way, how many of you are awake right now? <laughs> See, most of you are. There's some... The ones who didn't raise their hand, I can't, even, I can't even raise my hand. Most of you here, let me ask you this question. Why are you here? Why do you wake up in the morning? What is your God-given dream? Is it the wall? Or is it the moon? What do you, It's a pretty good question, don't you think? 
I want to get your eyes on amazing, which is the moon. And for some of you, I maybe even want to create a new moon. A moon that perhaps is bigger and greater and more impossible than your original moon. Because, you know, the longer you live, the more possibilities that you see. And then you can have a greater moon. I remember that when I was in my 20s, my moon was to be a millionaire. And I used to think in terms of having a million dollars. And wowee, to me it felt, looked, seemed like the moon. Well, you know, as I've grown, it doesn't seem like the moon anymore. And so the new moon went from a million in its transgressions to 50 million. And now the million doesn't seem so much. And then when it went from a million to 50 million and a passive income that you don't work for, 3 million, why did that become the moon? You say, what changed? What changed from that time until this time? And you know you what your answer would probably be? Your income. No, it wasn't my income that changed. That would be the misconception. You don't land on the moon and then shoot for it. You don't land on the moon and then shoot for it. You shoot for it and then land on the moon. What changed was not my income. Here's what changed. I decided that I would shoot for the moon. And then I wrote up what I thought the moon was, made of cheese. And I wrote out this moon, and it was my five-year plan. And I said, in five years, I'm going to be here on this moon. And I wrote out that moon, everything about the moon. I described it as detailed as I possibly could. And then I said, if this is where I'm going to be in five years, then I'm going to need to be here in four years. I divided it into five. I divided it by five. So I said, then I'll need to be here in four. Then I'll need to be here in three. Then I'll need to be here in two. And then I'll need to be here in one. And I laid out and I wrote out this five-year plan. And then when I had it, when I looked at it, then I started writing out the strategies. How can I get there? So how can I be here in one year? How can I do this? What, what is it that I've got to do? And I wrote out the strategies to make that five-year plan happen. And then I'll tell you what I did after that. After that, then, I started showing other people my five-year plan because I was so excited I couldn't stand it. Man, I'm telling you, now I've got a one mean reason to wake up in the morning. And, and so I had this dream. I had this God-given dream. This moon. The moon was in front of me. And now I couldn't see the wall. Now, did I have walls, everybody? Major walls. I had walls. Did I have walls? Absolutely. I had walls. Could I describe the walls to you? Yeah. I could describe the walls. I could tell you what the walls had done. I could show you the blood. I could show you how many transfusions I've needed. I could tell you all about the wall. But the truth of the matter was, now, all of a sudden, I've been transformed from the wall to the moon, man. Now I'm saying, wowie, look at this moon. And I was all pumped and I... I changed. You see, what changed was I changed from amazed to amazing. And I become obsessed with the moon and landing on it. And so then I took my moon, I took my five-year plan, I took my moon to Rhonda, my wife. We've been married 34 years and I took, I took this moon and I said, Rhonda, I said, look at this. Is this amazing or what? And she said, Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, she said, That would be, uh, that would be neat. That would be good. And you know, Keith, you know, you're, you know, cute and pudgy and all that, but, uh, and it would be neat, but you know what I'm getting the feeling, right? It isn't that she's against it. She just doesn't think it's going to happen. And I didn't stop with her. I went to everybody and said, Oh, wait, hey, 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 hey. Look at this one. What do you think of this? Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
Keith, let me remind you about a few of your walls. And they say, you remember when you tried this wall? You guys know that? Remember when you tried this and you ran right into the wall? Yeah, yeah. I, you remember when you drew blood from this? You went running and you ran straight into this wall. You remember that wall? Oh yeah, you were going to do this. You remember this dream? You were going to do that. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And you all of a sudden get reminded of some of these other stinking walls. Now I'm having a choice again. What's my choice? Do I focus on the wall or the moon? Now here's one of my conclusions, you guys, and you think this through. I've already shot for the wall and I've seen what it does. And it wasn't that good. In fact, I don't even recommend it. One of the things that I would tell you, and it may just seem kind of funny, but I'm telling you, I don't recommend shooting for the wall. You say, well, that seems kind of obvious. Well, if it's so obvious, why do 99.9% .9 of the people shoot for the wall? And why does only 0.01% shoot for the moon? There's a, there's a chapter in Deuteronomy 34 where God's talking to a group of people just like us here. And God's talking to a group of people. He says, now I've set two things before you. Life and death. Now, you know, I was not a good test taker in school. I was not good in school. I was no big, you know, I, I, I'd like to tell you that I was a big A student and all that. You know, I, I wasn't. Wasn't good at test. But there's a multiple choice I believe I could pass. I've said two things before you, life and death. Now, I'm thinking, okay, let's see, multiple choice. But, you know, God was afraid we'd flunk that test. So he not only gave them the test of A or B, he told them the answer. Straight up. He said, I've said two things before you, life and death. Then he said, now therefore, choose life. Yeah, that's what he said, choose life. 99% of the people went, rats, I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> life? Because uh -huh. death is so much easier. Now look, you guys. There's two things set before you. Amaze and amazing. Which one are you going to choose? Amazing. That is right. Who are you anyway? Amazing. Inspiring. Right. Now look. Do we have anybody in here that came to top flighters? How many of you in here came to Sarasota for our Sarasota top flight? Do we have someone here? Oh, very good, very good. Now let me just ask you, you came to Tough Light. And that's where I tried to give you a new moon. You, it isn't that you didn't come to Sarasota with a moon. But I wanted you to have a new moon. Now you raise your hand and maybe some of you... Left. How many of you by the time you left had a new moon? Pretty exciting, huh? Did you become, you might say, really obsessed with the moon? Because that's what it takes. It's like, wow. Now here's what happens. You get that moon and what you have to do is you have to be able to see it. Now every one of you in here, every integrity doctor, the first thing that you did when you joined, this should have been the first thing you did, was to make out that five plan. I don't know if you got it or not, but it doesn't get any more important than that. But I'm afraid a lot of you kind of look at it like every friend I had and, and my wife and family and everybody. It's, oh yeah, you know, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm a realist. Me too, man. I'm a realist. And I believe the moon is real. You can choose to believe in the wall if you want. But I choose to believe in the moon. And you know, I'm going to tell you, you say, in these economic times, in these economic times, you can't throw at me an economic time that doesn't include the moon for those who choose it. Because let me just tell you this, everybody. I want you to get this. There's always an excuse to focus on the wall. Try to find a time. It's always there. But you got to have a new moon. And you got to train your eyes to see the moon. Because the wall is always going to be there and the moon's always going to be there. So let me ask you some very penetrating questions. Can you see the moon? What is your moon? Is it impossible enough? 
Is it out there enough? Is it amazing? Do you have an amazing moon? A moon that absolutely makes your palms sweat. A moon that gives you butterflies inside your stomach because it's so high. As you know that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin must have had butterflies just thinking about stepping on the moon. Are they going to die? There's no air up there. Are they going to float away? There's no gravity there. Don't you know they were nervous? How many of you think they were nervous? I'm nervous watching them step outside. Even today's many times they do it, when they go outside, I'm always thinking, stay inside the capsule. Have you ever done that? <laughs> Have you ever thought, oh, rats, no. I'm, I'm thinking, how many of you feel better once they get back inside there again? If you've ever watched me, you say, oh, rats, when are they going inside? Okay, good, they're going inside. Okay, 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 okay they're inside. You'd think I'd related to them or something. I mean, I just, I feel that, okay, good, they're inside the capsule now. The moon is frightening. The moon is scary. The moon makes my palms sweat. The moon gives me butterflies on the inside. But I'm telling you, the reward is awesome. And the truth of the matter is, you've got to train your eyes to see this moon that must be, and if it isn't, you did it wrong, it must be an impossible moon. You guys know that song, To Dream the Impossible Moon. It's close. You have an impossible moon. And this impossible moon becomes all that you can see and you train your eyes to see it. Can you see the opportunities in your practice? Let me ask you as an example. We want 80% of the population getting regular chiropractic care. 80%. 80%. Now, let me ask you a question. That's right. Can you see it? Can you look at your community where you practice? Can you look at your community and see 80% of them getting regular chiropractic care? Can you see it? What does it look like anyway? What happens to the health of your community when 80% of them are getting regular chiropractic care? Does the health go up or what? What happens to drug use? What happens to hospitalization? Come on, you guys, what happens to it? What happens to sickness and disease, you guys? Whoo! They don't even need drugs because are they as sick as they used to be? Are they needing as many shots as they used to have to get? Are they needing the immunizations they even needed? Wow, are we seeing some diseases, diseases, are we even seeing them disappear? Disease, disappear. Do you like it? Can you see it? Do you get excited about it? Jeez. I'm telling you, some of your excitement is just a little bit boring. (laughs) I can imagine some of you men as spouses. You must be hard to live with. Do you love me, honey? Yes, I love you. (laughs) If I didn't love you, I wouldn't have married you, okay? Could we, you know, where's breakfast? I'm saying, can you see this? Can you see this ease? This up here? And do you get excited about that? Ooh, man. Once you see the amazing, the walls start to disappear. You're lifted above the walls. And now you can see the exit signs. And let me tell you how I see it. I see what we're doing in here is so important because I believe what I see is that inside this room is the true health care reform of this country. That's what I see. I wish I could tell you that I see the government as health care (laughs) reform. I can't see it. I wish I could tell you that insurance companies are the true health care reform. I wish I could tell you I could see it. I can't see it. There's only one group that I can see that has the ability to reform health. You can reform the health in this country naturally. And if you reform the health and the dis-ease disappears... What happens to the cost of health care? It goes down.
Is that amazing or what, everybody? So in this room is the healthcare reform of America. Is that great or what? I can see it. Now, once you've trained your eyes to see amazing, you just don't want to go back to the wall anymore. It isn't that the wall isn't there. It's just not near as much fun to look at as amazing. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Live in amazing. Now, catch this. As an example, have you ever bought a car and you thought it hardly anybody has this car? And you bought this color and you said, oh yeah, this is an unusual color. Nobody has this color. Have you ever bought this car and this color and then you drove it and on your way home you saw four of them? <laughs> it's like, well, rats, there's a... The... <sighs> you just said nobody was driving them. Then you got one and... Because all of a sudden now your eyes are trained to see what before you didn't even notice. A couple years ago, Ryan was diagnosed with celiac disease. I'd never heard of celiac disease. I didn't know what celiac disease was. It sounded to me like somebody's aunt's name, you know, Aunt Celiac. <laughs> what is it? And then I found out it is this very strong allergy to gluten. And then it was like, well, what in the world is gluten? I would have told you I've never heard of gluten. I would have said, I've never seen the word gluten. I would have said, nobody knows gluten. But rats, after I learned what gluten was and I started studying gluten, everywhere I go, I see gluten. And you know, it's pretty amazing. You can drive, you can go up to a grocery store and there's a whole huge glass window that's painted saying, gluten free section. You've got to be kidding me. Now, did gluten start after I learned gluten or was gluten there all along? I want you to catch this. This is pretty important. Was gluten always there and I just couldn't see it? It was. Now I want you to catch this. This is very important. The moon's always been there, you guys. It didn't just start. It isn't starting with the moon this morning. The moon's always been there. It's just that your eyes weren't trained to see the moon. You were so focused on the wall, if you've ever noticed, when you walk up to the wall, rats, it's all you can see is the wall. There's a moon. But I didn't train my eyes to see the moon. I trained my eyes to see the wall. Train your eyes. Have amazing eyes. Because what's true of the wall is also true of opportunities. When your eyes are trained to see opportunities, you see them. When they're trained to see ideas, you see them. Let me tell you something right now. With the classes that you have today, when you go to these classes, let me tell you something. Some people are going to see ideas. And they're going to see opportunities. And they're going to see new things. And there's going to be other people who say, Nope. I didn't see anything. Nope, I already know everything. Nope, I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. No, 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 I knew that. No, I, I know that. I know. No, 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 no. Didn't see anything. That went all day. Didn't see anything. Which ones do you think it is? Is it that the moon isn't there or their eyes not trained to see it? The people who have trained their eyes to see opportunities, guess what they see? The people whose eyes are trained to see ideas, guess what they see? Opportunities. <laughs> and the people who are trained to see walls, they see walls. And at the end of the day, they say, yeah, but the wall's still there. <sighs> Managed care, I still got kicked out of this plan. Still did. Yep, but there's the wall. Right? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice guy saying, why did I sit here on the end? It could have been her. <laughs> Train your eyes to see the right thing. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Does it matter? Does your vision impact your results? Does what I'm talking about, you're saying, that, does it matter? What do you see and does it impact the results? Or is what's going to happen going to happen anyway? Do you hit the moon or you don't hit the moon? Just cause. Luck. Fate. I want you to, if you don't get any other sentence, get this one, you guys. Life is determined more by your choice of dreams than your abilities. I want you to get that. That's a really big one. 
Your life is determined more by your choice of dreams than your abilities. Why? Because you can have amazing abilities and small or mediocre dreams, and that's all you're going to hit. I'd rather shoot for the moon and hit stars than shoot for the dirt and hit it spot on. Be careful. Did you ever hear anybody say, be careful what you dream, pray for, you just might get it? I'd say that about dreams. Be careful what you dream. You just might get it. If you dream in, term of, in, in terms of walls, probably going to get walls. How many times have you ever heard somebody say, yep, I thought that's what was going to happen. I knew it. You sure did. The Word became flesh, didn't it? The Word became flesh, so we better make it happen. Who are you? I say, boy, you make me say that a lot, because I want it to happen. I want the real you. Let's, let me give you a, a good vision example. The McDonald brothers had a hamburger stand on the West Coast. It was a really good hamburger stand. In fact, the McDonald brothers, each one of them, were making $100,000 a year off of that hamburger stand. And by the way, that was a lot of money in those days. So they were cutting a wide swath and they were doing good and they said, this is a really good hamburger stand. And they were doing it by selling hamburgers for 15 cents and french fries for five and stuff. I mean, it was awesome. Ray Kroc saw this hamburger stand. He said, you know, this is a great hamburger stand, but it could be a lot greater. They said, no, 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 no. We've, uh, tell you the truth. They said, well, I think we did this, we did it. No, they said, we, we've done that, we've done that. No, we've tried that. No. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we've already been there. Done that, we've done this, we've done that. This is as good as it gets. This is a great hamburger stand. This is as good as it This is the peak. This is the top. And Ray Kroc is saying, no, no. He says, I think we can, I, it, it can be greater than this. It, it could be gooder. It could be better than what this is. No, no, they said this is it. Now, you guys, isn't it kind of interesting? By the way, I should interject here just for some of you. At the time that Ray Kroc was seeing this hamburger stand, he was seeing that it could be a whole lot better than it was, and it was good. Ray Kroc was 52. He was old. He's 52, man, 52 years old. Imagine a 52-year-old guy still thinking he could shoot for the moon. Get this, some of you. How many of you are 50 and older? Ooh, it's good news for some of us. I happen, my hand's up. Way up. We can shoot for the moon. Well, Keith, I've been practicing for 25 years. I don't give a rip. You can be practicing for 35 years, 40 years, and still you can be what? So what are you shooting for anyway? Um. Some of you are already forgetting already. See, look, she even said it. Or he. It's very hard to tell at that age. Here's the deal. At 52, Ray Kroc said, nope, it can be better than this. And he bought that hamburger stand for three million bucks. And the McDonald brothers thought they really did good. Now, there's only one difference. I want you to look at Ray Kroc was looking at the same hamburger stand as the McDonald brothers. Now, how many of you know the end of this story? Ray Kroc, I mean, he ended up taking that hamburger stand and I, I think there's seven of them now. In every block of America. And all of them doing good. No, the truth of the matter is, there was only one difference in Ray Kroc and the McDonald brothers. They were looking at the same hamburger stand. They just had a different vision of the same hamburger stand. How do you see your practice? Even though you're 52. Even though you think it's already at the top. You think? Or could there be a new moon? Everybody get it? It's the vision. 
that matters. The vision does matter. Instead of shooting for reasonable and achievable goals, here's what I want you to try. I want you to try shooting for the moon. Now, that means that you're going to be going for something that's going to take more than just you. And it's going to take more than what you can accomplish on your own. You're going to make that vision board and you're going to have that five-year plan. And you're going to have people say, you've already had plans and you've already had goals and you didn't hit those either. Thank you, Mr. Wall. (laughs) We're going to paint it anyway. All in favor say aye. Aye. The moon becomes why you wake up in the morning. It becomes why you work. It becomes why you risk. And is it going to take a risk? Absolutely. It's going to be a risk. If it doesn't take a risk, bad moon. Bad moon rising. Let me give you another little, another little example of moon. This is our home in uh, Florida, Lakewood Ranch. And this home, I'll tell you the reason that we live here. There's lots of beautiful homes, but there's a reason why we live in this home. <coughs> we live in this home because it was Rhonda's moon. <coughs> they have in Florida there. <coughs> Excuse me. On this street, at the time that it was built, it was called Dream Street. And what they did was they built about five or six homes all along this street and they made them model homes. And so what a person could do is you could come and park your car and just walk from home to home to home and see these dream homes. And you just did it for the fun of it. It was the fun afternoon where you would go and walk through these homes and see what it would be like to live in a dream home. So we did that and we went to Dream Street and we parked the car and we went from home to home to home to home. This was one of the dream homes and it was on the end of the cul-de-sac. For those of you who have been there, you know, it was on the end of this cul-de-sac. So we walked and this was the last home. And when Rhonda went in this home, she said, this is my dream home. If I could live anywhere, this is the home that I would choose. If I could have any home, I'd choose this home. So, naturally, we checked it out. And as proof that prayer works and that God is God, it was already bought. That was a good thing. Oh, rats, honey. It's been sold. And a major league baseball player owned it, who played for the St. Louis Cardinals. And so we couldn't buy it. Oh, well. Sorry, honey, it's taken. Would have been nice. Well, you would think that the dream would have just been tossed, wouldn't you? Didn't happen that way. Let me tell you what happened. Over a year later, we're at our condo there that you all visited, the top flighters when you were there. We're at our condo and... Rhonda's laying on the couch there on Longboat Key, and she's laying on the couch reading the Longboat Key Observer. Now, let me tell you how weird this is. The Longboat Key Observer, you know, these are the little local ones that only carry local news. And so you read the local news in the local paper. And it also has the local real estate. And all of the real estate that's listed in the Longboat Key Observer are condos that are in Longboat Key. She's reading the Longboat Key Observer. And as she's going through it, all of a sudden she shrieks. She says, Keith, come in here. You're not going to believe this. I can't. I said, what? She said, my dream home is for sale. (laughs) Now she's reading the Longboat Key Observer. This home is in Lakewood Ranch. The only home in Lakewood Ranch. Thank you, Greg. The only home in Lakewood Ranch... That's in the Longboat Key Observer is this home. And her dream home is in this paper. And it's for sale. Guess where we were the next day? We're in the office making an offer on her dream home. Her eyes were trained to see it. Let me help you with something here because this is the truth. If I had given a Longboat Key Observer to every one of you in here, you probably would have read the whole thing and never seen that home. But her eyes were trained to see it. It was the moon. Do you catch the difference? So, 
You need to have an amazing home. Train your eyes to see it. Where you start seeing some amazing trips. One of the things I love about the top flight is that it's forced me to take trips that I would have never taken. I would have stayed in the U.S. of A. It forced me to move outside of it. An amazing thing. Be forced to have amazing friends. Discipline yourself to only have amazing friends. You know what makes it so great to be here? Is that you're surrounded by amazing people. Amazing friends. The thing I love about Top Flight are the amazing people. They always lift my imagination and my possibilities and my dreams. I want you to fix your eyes on having an amazing practice. And, and just to get you stirred and just to get you started, I like showing you the different practices that we have around the country. Here's a practice I want you to look at. It's an amazing practice, a beautiful practice. This is Stephen Heather Carlson in Missouri. Take a look at their practice. It's awesome. One look at this amazing 5,000 square foot office and you will know why Steve and Heather Carlson are top flight doctors and coaches for integrity management. Gone are the days of shag carpet, paneled walls and paper posters put on the wall with tacks, you know, and the corners of the posters curling up. <laughs> Integrity doctors are first class doctors and the Carlson's office is a fantastic integrity example that reflects the way chiropractic should look. Like the place in healthcare it deserves. Number one. You can't find any office in healthcare that will outclass this one. The magnificent signage out front, the mega modern reception area, the nine treatment rooms with computers in each room, the six flat screen TVs throughout the office, and the modern artwork that you see throughout the office. And how about that spacious rehab area? Wow! I am proud. This represents chiropractic care. Congratulations, Carlsons. You have built an office that is amazing, inspiring, and unstoppable. Pretty cool, huh? That's neat. And should be the norm, don't you think? The norm. Everywhere you go, everywhere you see it. Why, we're number one in health care, aren't we? And it ought to be number one in every way is to be amazing. That's what we got to say. And not only do we got to have an amazing office like that, amazing practice, we have an amazing staff, right, staff? I'm telling you now, we've got a whole afternoon of classes here. For instance, all afternoon we have one category of classes that's for staff management. We want an amazing staff. It's an important part of the key. You can't get there by yourself. Truth of the matter is, if you take a look at Buzz Aldrin and you take a look at Neil Armstrong, they didn't get there by themselves. They had a huge team, didn't they? Huge team, and it's pretty important. So we have one whole afternoon, one of the lines of classes is on staff management. By the way... Where is that class going to be at? Yes, yeah, staff engine. It's going to be the one with the low ceiling here. So this wall will be pulled, and in this category over here will be the staff management classes. You'll want to be here for that one in the afternoon starting at 1.30. And not only do we got to have an amazing staff, but we also need to have, if we're going to hit 80%, we got to have an amazing number of new patients, right? And you got to have all kinds of ways to get there. And one of the ways that we've got to become well versed in is in the area of social marketing in other words internet 
And by the way, I've done a study and I'm pretty sure that the Internet's here to stay. (laughs) I'm thinking it's not a fad anymore, don't you think? So as a result, we're going to have to know it. And boy, there's a lot of, of bad advice out there. And there's a lot of people who take advantage of the fact that some of us don't know it real well. And I want you to know it really well. We have one doctor, for instance, just to give you an, an example. We, have, uh, we had one doctor, one of our integrity doctors, who told us, Russ, they just did this deal where they were paying another chiropractor $600 a month because this other chiropractor said that they would do the social marketing for them and to have Facebook, Twitter, and a blogger page, they were paying $600 a month to have this stuff. Now, what's the problem with that? It's free. We had another doctor who was paying $169 a month for this word that you hear a lot these days, website optimization. And we'll guarantee you this top dog thing and you'll be the first one up and all this kind of baloney. Now what they would do is they set it up for $169 a month. They would get a Google Analytics report emailed each morning to their office to tell them where they are. So, wowee, you're getting this report every morning, $169 a month. What's the problem? It's free. You can get that report without paying $169 a month. So here's the thing I want you to realize. All afternoon, and by the way, Ryan, where will this class be, the social marketing class? It'll be right here in the center, starting from here to there. Right here will be in this class will be this. Now, there's going to be three hours taught on this, and here's why you're going to like it. The reason why it's so great is because, and we're also, then in the next class, we're giving you an entire product of social marketing. It's four hours of of video, training, slides, presentations, everything. You're going to get this dominating the social marketing. You're going to get that product. It's worth, really, others will sell it for thousands, actually, thousands of dollars. You're going to get it for free today. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. Plus the classes, and when you're in the classes, you'll find out why it's good to have the product because it's difficult to retain all of it, you know, at one time. So what you're going to do is you're going to get all that together this afternoon. And here's what the great value is of it. At the end of the day, we're not selling you anything. And that's the problem with so much of what you listen to. They're telling you this and that and the other thing. Therefore, you need this. And they'll say, and you know, wow, there's no way we could cover this, but we'll do this. And then you buy that. And there's always an agenda, right? There's no agenda with this. You can just relax, enjoy it, get the information. There's nothing for sale at the end. Is that a good thing, everybody, or what? It's just there. You get it already. So that's good. Everything you need to know, you'll want to be there for that. So let me ask you a penetrating question. Then, with that being said, do you see the moon? Are you living in a maze or are you living in amazing? And if we say, I hope you say that... You're shooting for the moon, so everybody say that. I'm shooting for the moon. Right. Now that the moon is your target, let's answer this question then before we go on. How do you hit the moon if that's what you're shooting for? You said you're shooting for the moon, so how do you hit the moon? Hitting the moon requires an amazing mindset. You have to think amazing. You can't hit amazing. You can't hit the moon unless you are thinking amazing. Now the question we've got to answer, I guess, is what does it mean to think amazing? Most of our minds, you guys, particularly we're here in the Midwest where we call ourselves realists, here in the Midwest we have a tendency to think cheap. How many of you were raised cheap? Mm, yep, 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 yep. How many of you uh, think cheap? How many of you are really cheap? And the rest of you are really liars. Therefore, if we can train our minds to be cheap, we can train our minds to be amazing. It's all trainable. To be an amazing thinker, what does it mean? To be an amazing thinker, the easiest way to sum it up is this. Think abundance. Train your mind to think abundance. What does it mean to think abundance? It means that there is an abundance of new patients. You see, when we talk about having new patients and we talk about triple digit new patients, your first thought is, oh no, oh no, 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 no. And how do I know that you don't think in terms of abundance? Do you realize how many doctors there are that pray to God every night that no other chiropractor will move into their community? Oh no, there's one moving. Oh, oh. Three blocks away, there's another one moving in, there's another carpet. You think, there's only seven patients, and so now there's three doctors. 
There's an abundance of people, everybody. There are 300 million people in this country and 60,000 chiropractors. Do the math. There's enough to buy lunch. Stop thinking that there's only a few. There's an abundance of new patients. There is no scarcity. Here's the neat thing about us in integrity. We know and we want every chiropractor to do great. And the more successful every chiropractor is, the more successful you'll be. You see, being number one is a lot easier than being number three. We need people to do well. We need 80% of the population getting chiropractic care. Therefore, we want success and we think in terms of an abundance of people. There are an abundance of new patients and realize that it's just a matter of picking them. It's just a matter of getting them. It's a matter of deciding how we handle them all. That's the way we think. We think amazing. Is that the way you think? You thinking amazing? Are you thinking, wowie, I'm thinking that 125 new patients a month, that's not going to get it. We can do more than that. That's the way you're thinking, right? That's the way you're thinking. You know how many chiropractors I've heard? Oh, yeah, we have all the new patients that we can handle. Yeah, we, How many have 30 a month? Really? That's an abundance? Think amazing. Everybody get it? An abundance of time. Oh, no, well, yeah, but if we had more than 30, I don't know where, you know, then we'd just have to become a cattle mill there. You know, we just have to, oh, no, there's not time for it. No, no, when you think amazing, there's an abundance of time. Plenty of time. The truth of the matter is everybody's been given enough. Everybody's been given the same amount of time. How many of you know who Sam Walton is? How many stores has he got? A lot. From one store in Bentonville, Arkansas. Now let me ask you, did he have more time than you? Same amount of time. There's an abundance of time. More than enough time. Well, I would have a great practice, but I love my family. Please, don't cop out on me. You can love your family and have a great practice. Get it. There's an abundance of time. Oh, oh, yeah, but we would have a lot of new patients, but I want to make sure that we give quality care. Can you give quality and have an abundance of new patients, everybody? Just a matter of having a good system. That's all it is. Don't use the cop-outs. And there's an abundance of money. There's another one I want you to get. How much money is there in this country anyway? There's an abundance. There's an abundance of money. Oh, no, no, the economy. No, I'm telling you, there's an abundance of money. We still have more money. We are one spoiled nation, everybody. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, everybody drives me nuts is that how ungrateful they are. Our idea of poverty level is not having unlimited texting. <laughs> yes, I have four kids and some of them only have a cell phone. Oh, wow. We only have 150 channels. Truth, everybody. There's an abundance of money. And insurance has made us scarcity-minded. You can't even answer the phone without asking for somebody's insurance. So stupid. What do you care? You're supposed to care about their health. Good morning, Sid Smith from the Chiropractic. Can I make an appointment for you today? Why do you want to make an appointment? Well, I would make an appointment for you, but what's your insurance? I'm begging you, don't do that. We're not scarcity-minded, everybody. It doesn't matter. We're there for their health, and we are their natural cure. Is that amazing or what? All they got to do is set foot in your office, and they can get rid of dis-ease naturally. They won't have to be cut on. They won't have to be put to sleep. They won't have to take drugs. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Pretty amazing. There's an abundance of money. We are not dependent on insurance. They are not our source. Neither is who's ever elected for whatever office. Neither is the government. Neither are the TV news. If I could blow anything up, it would probably be the news department. You know what? We will be, the enemy is within. Usually. Scarcity thinking symptoms, just so that I test you. Are you a scarcity thinker, by the way? 
Do you think scarcity or do you think abundance? Let me give you some symptoms. Scarcity thinkers think in terms of safety and security. Safety is their top priority. Safety. They play not to lose. They don't go for the win. They just don't want to lose. They don't go for being complete wellness. They just want to not be in pain. How many of you have scarcity thinking patients? They think in terms of, I must be okay, I'm not any pain in, in, in any pain anymore. They think in terms of scarcity health. I just want to not be full of disease. I just want to not be dying. I just want to not be in pain. Rather than to have complete, total wealth of health. You get the difference. And the same thing is true of you and your practice. Scarcity thinkers are terrified of losing what they have because their minds are drowning in this cesspool of scarcity. Now, I live in Florida. I told you guys, in Florida, I don't know if you know, we have quite a few older people. Have you ever watched older people drive? It's the only kind of people we can watch in Florida. And I'm telling you how they drive. Here's what they think. It's okay to pull in front of you. It's okay to change lanes in front of you as long as you do it slowly. (laughs) That's the way they think. I'm being careful because I'm going slow. And they can pull right smack dab in front of you, but they did it at such a slow pace, it's your fault. You guys know what I'm talking about? It reflects so many of your thinking. You think if you just barely do something, then you're safe. If you slowly do something, then you're safe. If you slowly make decisions, then you're safe. If you slowly make changes, then you're safe. If you make no changes, then you're safe. If you go for no new moon, then you're safe. Amazing thinkers take risks. If they figure this, if they go for it and lose, then they just have still plenty of time to go for it again. It's okay. I'll just go for it again. Scarcity thinkers pride themselves in saying they haven't made any mistakes. They haven't won anything. But they haven't lost anything. Scarcity thinkers focus on taking and not giving. So which one are you? They don't want to give because they're afraid the money might dry up and then there wouldn't be enough for them. It becomes the deal. So I'm asking you, how do you think? Do you think scarcity or do you think amazing? It's a pretty important question. To hit the moon, you've got to think amazing and you've also got to partner with amazing. You've got to surround yourself with amazing people. It's a big deal. I'm telling you, you being in here today is a bigger deal than you think. You think it doesn't matter who you hang around with. I'm telling you, most of you are surrounded by chickens and you become one naturally. The reason why it's so important to be here is because you must surround yourself with people who actually believe in winning, who believe in success, who pride themselves in going for the moon, who believe that there's honor and value in shooting for the moon, who you can be in a place where you're not put down because you decided to shoot for the moon. We live in a world today that is trying to make us feel like we are evil if we're shooting for the moon. I happen to think, how many of you in here, how many of you have ever lost and been hurt before? How many of you have ever won? How many of you like winning better? Hang those losers, man. I like winning. Listen, I know what it's like to lose. Rats, I have season tickets to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. (laughs) It's more fun to win, you guys. Like it or lump it. It's the way that it is. Now, you know what you've got to decide? You've got to decide to surround yourself with winning people. Where it's okay to... It helps to be here where it's okay to be a winner. You can go back to your community and you say, Rest, I don't even know if I should buy a new car because what will everybody else think? I'm in a new car. Ooh, should we build a house that nice? Well, what are, what's everybody going to say? Right? Come on. Isn't that right? Well, yeah, but what are other people going to think? If I drive up in that new car, then they're not going to want to pay for their... Pay. Scarcity thinkers, you are not... The, you got to partner with Amazing. That's what makes it so valuable. That's what makes it important. Smart people partner with... And by the way, how many of you are parents in here? Parents? 
How many of you have ever seen your kids hang around with the wrong kids? Have you ever seen other kids impact their behavior? Have you ever seen other kids impact their thinking? Have you ever seen have you ever seen it where your kids all of a sudden they're saying things that they didn't not used to say? Have you ever seen it where they have attitudes that they didn't used to have and all of a sudden they smart off? All of a sudden they come in and one, one, two, day, day, yeah, 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 come over here, come over here. Where, where did that come from? Where, where did you get that? You know what you gotta do? Just go to school with them. You'll find out all of a sudden the kid that they're mating, meeting with that day is a smart off. Oh, rats. That was close. <laughs> You had my attention all the time. But now I really have it. But is this true or not? Now everybody, let's get this. If it's true for your kids, do you really think it isn't true for you? A lot of you hang around with a bunch of chickens and you become one and you're making a mistake. There's tremendous value. You say, well, what are you getting being top flight? What are you getting being in here? I'll tell you what you get. You get eagles. And eagles matter. Be careful who you run around with. Be careful who you partner with. To hit the moon, you've got to hang around with people that are moon shooters. Discipline yourself to moon shooters only. There are wall headbangers and there are moon shooters. Which one are you going to hang around? And does it matter? Man alive. We, we took one top flight where that was the only subject. It's just talking about moon shooters, hanging around moon shooters and not wall head bangers. Now here's the deal. Did you see Catherine Bigelow get the award? Is it Emmys or Oscars or whatever it is that you get? You know, whatever the top award is for the best director. She got best director, the first female to get best director. And she got up there. I loved it. She got up there and you know what she said? She said, I discovered the secret in becoming the best of the best. I discovered the secret in being best director. You know what it is? Collaboration, she said. You know what she said? And then she started naming the people. She said, I put the best people around me. Wow, that was good. You know why you're here? It's because most people aren't smart enough to do it. Here's the thing that you've got to catch. Here's a statement. I want you to catch the importance of this. No one in history. No one. How many people is that? How many people is no one? None. None. That's the zero. None. No one. Not a few. No one. How many of you think you'd be the exception? No, no one. In what period of time? History. Ever. No, no one ever. Now, this is telling us that the odds aren't good that you can break this. Does everybody get the deal? Now, on Dumb and Dumber, he kind of thought, well, what happened to all that one in a million stuff? This is no one, no one in history has ever achieved extraordinary success without mentoring, without coaching, without somebody pushing, without somebody helping your dreams. You get it? Nobody. A secret to amazing is the ability to copy genius. That's really good, you guys. Now, it's the opposite to the way we grew up learning. For instance, we grew up being taught not to copy. As a matter of fact, if we were caught copying, we got a zero. Now you get into the real world, and here's what I'm telling you. You need to copy. Copy a lot. If you don't copy, you're going to get a zero. Copy genius. Look on other people's paper. Copy genius. Get around them. Top flighters, stand up. You top flight people, stand up. Stand up, top flighters. Stand up. Wowie. Okay, look. Great. Look at these people. Look at them. Copy them. Get with them. Go to lunch. Get with them on the breaks. Go to supper. Bother them. Banter them. Make sure that they have no free time. And I mean it. And top flighters, stop what you're doing. Answer their questions. Be real. And inspire them. You will be inspiring. Inspire them. 
motivate them, challenge them, believe in them, give them the heart and the mind and the dream that they really have the real them. You be an inspirer. Because that's the reason that we're here. Because there is no such thing as doing it on your own. The truth of the matter is we all need the mentorship, don't we? Now let me tell you something that's very real about these people. Just when you think you're doing good, start talking to one of them and all of a sudden you find out, rats, there's more to do. Just when I thought I got started. Just when I thought I was there, I find out. And tough liars, don't you find, even when you come to tough liars, you get around other tough liars, you say, man, I thought I was doing pretty good. But, oh, geez. It's important to put yourself around people that are at a higher level than you are. Success isn't a widget. Success is not a hammer or a nail. Success is an attitude. Success is a character. Success is a mindset. Success is, success is an idea. It's a concept. It's something that you catch like other diseases. All in favor say aye. Okay, you can have a seat. I can tell you this right now. One reason why you give these people, some of my best thinking has been done by other people. And I just heard it. Or I read it. And you know what I found about other people's great thinking? After I get it and I read it and I hear it and I do it and I write it down, after I've thought about it a while, it becomes mine. And pretty soon, I'm brilliant. And I became brilliant from other people's thinking. See, here's the neat thing. What didn't work for me in high school works for me now. I copy real good. <laughs> and I copy other people's genius. It's a good thing. You know, I use my resources. You have a client connection page. Use it. Now, I don't know. When I was in high school, I go to the math class. They say, you're going to take this math test, but you can't use a calculator. Well, how come? We got one. Well, yeah, but you know, you never know when you won't have one. <laughs> Where do we get this stuff? So it's like, well, don't use any resources. Just, you know, rely on you. Don't copy, don't, and don't get together. Did you ever have teachers, by the way, just to just ask you, did you ever have teachers, for instance, who said, well, you know, I'm not, I want you to, I would teach you this stuff, but it's better for you to learn it on your own. So I have a teacher because why? <laughs> well, it's better if you do it on your own. Well, I'm just going to tell you. It's not better for you to do it on your own. And Neil Armstrong didn't get there by himself. And he did have a lot of people help him. And I'm telling you, Neil Armstrong wouldn't have walked on the moon had it not been for a lot of other people. And I think if you talked to him, you'd find that he wouldn't take all the credit for it. And I'll tell you something else I think he'd say, and I want you to get this, this is pretty important. I think he'd say anybody who thinks you can get there by themselves is stupid. you know how many doctors I've heard say, well, I want to see if I can do this by myself first? Do you know how many doctors I've heard say, well, I just think I ought to be able to do it on my own? Why? Are you an idiot or what? Why would you think you can do anything extraordinary on your own? You can't do anything extraordinary on your own. My word, man, you are helpless. You know what I'm saying, don't you? Smart people know what they don't know. The scary people are the people who don't know what they don't know. Rats, we've got some students here. I've known students that came out of college thinking they already know how to build a practice. Really have. And they'll come and say, well, I already know how I want to do it. Wowee, somebody get out of the way. Major dumbbell. <laughs> right? Really? For those of you who are parents, you know what I'm talking about. How many of you have a 13-year-old know-it-all? <laughs> and they're scary, aren't they? Because they think they know. Oh, man, you don't realize what you don't know. All in favor, say aye. 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 This mentorship business, it's important. Seven reasons why. I want you to get them. You must be reinforced as to why you must do. You must not only have that five-year plan I started out the morning talking about, but you need to have a coach that is absolutely nailing you on your five-year plan and on your strategies. Why? It's the fastest way to overcome your lack of know-how. That is, if you have the ability to admit that there's something you don't know. How many of you admit that you don't know it all? Oh, good. That's what makes us such a brilliant group. 
Second reason, it's the fastest way to raise your limits. There are always people who have gone further. That's why you get with top flight people. That's why it's important to be in it. It's the fastest way to increase your talents and time and knowledge. It's just that when you're around people who know stuff, you learn stuff all the time. You're learning stuff because you're with people who have already been where you've been. It drastically increases your chances of success. How many of you would like to have a better chance of success than failure? Then you have mentors. You have coaches. You have people around you who are doing well. It lifts you far above your competition. And why is that? The reason that's true is because your competition will never admit the need to a coach. They'll want to do it on their own. And it puts them 700 steps behind you. Wow, you know, it's just absolutely amazing what you can do once you realize the value and the importance. Wow. I'll tell you what, I'm going to take an example here. Stand up. This is a neat guy here. This is a really neat guy. Tell him who you are and where you're from. Uh, Lee Wickwire, and I'm from Hiawatha, Iowa. Hiawatha, Iowa. <laughs> Isn't that something, Hiawatha? That's some, that's some, I don't know, there's a story about that somewhere. Hiawatha, you went hunting. And how long have you been in practice there? About seven months, a little bit over. He's been in practice seven months. Seven months. He's a pup. How old are you anyway, Lee? 31. Oh, I hate your guts. Right. <laughs> He's 30 stinking one. Have your staff. Staff, stand up. Look at this now. Look at this. He's been in practice how long? Seven months. Do you know how many people have been in practice seven months and they haven't hired anybody yet? Honestly. And who's this? My mom. This is his mom. She's his new practice representative. Pretty awesome. I saw him getting on the elevator this morning. You know one of the first things he told me? He says, do you remember the first thing he told me? He said, I'm hitting... Top flight. When? By summer. Wow. That's right. Is that a wow, everybody? Come on. Wow. That's a wow. He's hitting top flight, man. By summer. That's awesome. Okay, you can have a seat. But here's what I want you to get. Yeah, In Hiawatha, Iowa... If it can be done there, it can be done anywhere. <laughs> and do you know how many people start out in seven and can't even get close to doing what we're talking about here? How many of you think coaching was a better thing? Coaching's a better thing. Rats. Oh, but somebody else won't have hired anybody, but they did it on their own, bless God. Really smart. Oh, it's exciting to see. Don't you love seeing people win? I love it. That's why my day started out right. Just getting on the elevator with these folks. Just just meeting them at the elevator. It drastically increases your chances of success. It lifts you above your competition. It reduces the risk of failure. How many of you how many of you believe in the Bible? This question. Okay, here's what the Bible says. So you think that the Bible's correct? Without counsel, that's coaching. Without coaching, people fail. But in the multitude of coaches, there is safety. Pretty smart, isn't it? I wonder if the Bible could be right. It has a funny way of through the years. It reduces your personal workload and stress. No mentoring means it's all up to you. That's success. Stress. Oh, by the way, let me give you one other. I told you I went skeet shooting. Well, we went skeet shooting, but we didn't just go skeet shooting because that's what most people do. When they go skeet shooting, they just go skeet shooting. Now, if you just go skeet shooting, here's what it's going to mean. You're going to go and you're going to get a gun and there's going to get a bunch of skeet. And you know what skeet shooting is? It's these little orange things and they just fly out, you know, from everywhere. And so you say, pull. That's what you say. You go, pull. And then skeets go, and so if you just go skeet shooting, you, you, you go, pull. Then they just keep flying. Pull. Pull. And you continue to miss it and you continue to miss it. And rats, you know, you just figure if you just shoot more, maybe someday you'll hit one. Right? Or you can get a coach. 
So we got a coach and we had a professional. You know what he did? He right from the beginning. He told us, now this is a gun. And he showed us where the trigger was and how to open it and where to put the gun on our shoulder and how to stand and where to put our feet. He told us everything. And then we went out there to shoot skeet. So I go out there to shoot skeet. And so he says, okay, now do this. And he's told me everything. He says, now look, and here's where you're going to look. Look at the end of this. Look at this. And then you're going to want to put, put the skeet right here in your sights. Put it where it's right there. So I tried to do everything. I said, okay, pull. Then I missed it. He said, okay, you did this, but you didn't do this. I want you to try doing this this time. And so then I said, okay, pull. And I missed it. He said, well, you know what? You did better. That was better. That was closer. Now I just need you to do this. I said, okay, okay, pull. And I hit that skate. <laughs> and you know, one of the bad things about me, those of you who know me, I, I'm, a, I'm like a way too passionate person. So I went, pull. I hit that thing. I said, wow, did you see that? Everybody hit the ground. I don't know what happened. They all hit the ground. My coach grabbed my gun and said, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hold that thing. A little too much excitement. But I want you to understand, if I hadn't had a coach, I'd have just left frustrated saying skeet doesn't work. If I hadn't done what the coach said, I would have just left saying skeet doesn't work. But just having someone and then them watching and then them telling me and then me doing it, it just drastically increases my rate of success. Does everybody understand? So the deal is, there's tremendous benefits to paying attention and just doing it. Amazing also requires a vision map. Not only do you have your five-year plan and your moon, you know where you're going, you have the moon, but you have the strategies to get there. How many of you have ever done a Google map before? You know what has to happen? A Google map just requires you to do this. You must type in where you are and you must type in where you want to go. You have to know that. You can't just say, I just want to go. I want to go somewhere neat. I want to go somewhere fun. You can't type fun into a Google map. You have to type in an address. If you have a GPS, you have to type in an address. Now, once you have your five-year plan and you say exactly where you want to go, then what it does, have you ever seen the directions for it? It, it outlines everything. You go 1.3 miles, turn right on such and such, go 4.7 miles, turn left on... Has everybody seen that? Now, that's what the strategies are. Now, what happens if I print out that map and then it says go 1.7 miles and turn right and I go 1.3 miles and turn left? The Google map doesn't work. Or was I not smart enough just to follow the directions as they are without creating my own version? You have a Google map. You have a strategies. I want you to understand that when people are living the dream, the dream didn't just happen. It didn't just appear. They followed the moon and they followed the directions. They followed the strategies with the coach. Hitting the moon does not just happen by accident or by inflation. It doesn't just fall into place. Let me just say this quickly for those of you who are Christians. I just want you to get this because uh, I think it's important. It's a pattern for me. One of the things that was very inspiring to me, which is why I'm a Christian, one of the things that was inspiring to me is that there's a scripture that says, before the foundation of the world, he had a plan. Wow, he didn't have a five-year plan. He had a five-billion-year plan. Before the so that, And this is what it means. It means that when Christ was on the cross, he didn't just fall there. He put himself there on purpose. It was part of the plan before the foundation of the world. Is that amazing, everybody, or what? You might say, that's right. <laughs> he had me at hello. That was amazing. Now, I, here's what I think, you guys. I'm one of those people that likes to follow success. Remember, you copy genius. He had a plan. And he had a strategy. And he followed it. He put himself there on purpose. I'm thinking maybe that's a pattern I should follow. 
All in favor say aye. Aye. So let me ask you a question. If this is what I consider to be so important, is to have a vision map, a Google map, a strategy for your five-year plan. If we have this, let me ask you a question. Now be honest. Take your halo off for a second. I, I got I to gotta keep moving, but you need to get this, so I want to make sure I get it. Here's the deal. If I gave you a choice and you had to choose between one of two things, I gave you a choice right now, you want to hit the moon, and I gave you a choice between a financial backer, which means this, he will give you all the money that you need to go for it. And if you go for it and you lose, he'll still pay for it. He'll provide you with all the money you need to go for the moon. Let me ask you a question. A financial backer or... I'll either give you a financial backer or I'll give you a strategy to hit the moon. I'll give you the strategies. I'll give you the map. Here's what you need to do. I'll give you the strategies or I'll give you the financial backer. Which one do you want? Which one would you choose? Now let me just tell you what the 99% would choose. The 99% would choose the money. They would choose the financial backer. What would General Motors choose? Honestly? Are we finding out, everybody, money isn't the solution? You guys, here's what you need to get. I can't teach it to the country, but I can teach it to you. Money is a byproduct. It is not the means. Here's what would happen. If I gave you the money, you'd lose it and we'd have to do it again. Ask the airlines. Honestly, ask the airlines. They go bankrupt, we bail them out, what do they do again? They go bankrupt because we didn't give them the strategies, we gave them the money. And they had a financial backer and the financial backer was us. And did it work? Of course not because money is not the means the strategy is the means. So how much are the how much is the five year plan and the strategies worth to you? Everything. It's the only way you can get there. Well, if I only had the money, no. If you had the money, you'd lose it. You need the plan. You need the strategies. Everybody get it? Very important to get this. Nothing is more powerful than a person with a clear vision map because the strategies are the means. Money is the result. It's the old adage, do you give a person a fish or do you teach them how to fish? We've been given fish a long time. It's never worked. It never will. You teach them how to fish instead. One other thing to hitting the moon, how do you hit the moon? It requires courage. The reason it requires courage is this, everybody. As soon as you choose to shoot for the moon today, how many of you are going to shoot for the moon? As soon as you choose to shoot for the moon, you're going to walk out of here and on Monday you're going to hit a wall. And you're going to say, oh rats, see there it is, there it is. Yep, there it is. The wall was always there, but so is the moon. And you're going to be tempted. And you're going to need courage to overcome failure. Because amazing requires courage. Let me ask you in here, how many of you have ever done anything stupid? How many of you have ever done something so stupid that you can't even explain why you did it? And the rest of you are too stupid to even know that you haven't done anything that stupid. <laughs> We've all done so many stupid things, just stupid things. You can't even say, what, how, why did you do that? What were you thinking? I don't know. You have to have the courage to overcome stupid. You have to have the courage to overcome rejection. How many of you have ever had rejection? I'll have doctors say, I don't want to do screenings. I don't believe in screenings. What do they really tell me? They don't like going to a booth and having people just walk by them. They don't like going somewhere and having you show them something and then they walk away and don't make an appointment. You don't like rejection. Who in the world does? But you've got to have the courage to overcome objection. Have some guts. I get so tired of this stuff, you guys. I get tired of raising a courageless country, and I get tired of having spineless chiropractors. How could it get any more disgusting than a spineless chiropractor? 
You gotta have some guts. You gotta have some courage. I heard just on the news before I came down here, somebody said, oh no, you can't say this to that group because it might hurt their feelings. <laughs> Are we all just a bunch of babies walking around or something? Have some guts. Courage. All in favor say aye. aye. It takes courage to overcome mediocrity. It takes courage to rise above the everybody else's. I wrote down this statement this week so it will come up in another one because I didn't intend it for this one and I just thought of it this week and it's just one of those things that, that it has to show up somewhere else but nobody else got to hear it. And that is this. I do not fear, be, I do not fear at all not keeping up with the Joneses. I fear becoming the Joneses. That's what I fear. I don't want to become the mediocre. I don't want to try to keep up with the Joneses. I don't want to become the Joneses. I've got my sights set on the moon. Does everybody get it? Do nothing requires no courage. I also must have the courage to overcome people depressors. How many of you have ever met a people depressor? You ever had a tongue depressor? You ever had them take a tongue depressor? How many of you ever gagged on a tongue depressor? I gag on people depressors. They just make me gag. Get away from them. I don't like tongue depressors and I don't like people depressors. It takes courage to not quit when you get behind on your plan. Of course you've been behind on your plan. What do you want me to do? Cry for you or what, you wimp? You're behind on your plan? Suck it up. Get going. Pull it out. Work on it. Of course you're behind on your plan. What are you going to do? What are you going to teach your kids anyway? They're playing sports. They get behind. What are you going to do? Well, just stay in the stinking dugout. You're behind. No sense in going up to the plate. Don't go to bat. You're behind, wimp. Of course you don't teach that because that would be a horrible display of character. Well, you're behind on your plan. What in the world are you going to do? Get out of the stinking dugout. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and get up to the plate and swing the bat. All in favor say aye. Aye. Of course. It takes courage not to quit when the money gets tight. How many of you have ever had tight money before? So what are you going to do? Get some guts, bucko. It takes courage not to quit when you get tired. Do you know how many, in 20 some odd years that I've been doing this, do you know how many chiropractors I've had say, well, I'm just burned out? And I'm supposed to say, oh, well, if you're burned out, I understand. Well, let's just go to bed. We'll just go to sleep. Because you're burned out and I wouldn't want you to get tired. Brother John, take your diaper off and go to work. <laughs> you're an adult for crying out loud. What do you mean you're burned out? You know, I'm kind of burned out of being a parent. I don't feel like being a parent anymore. How many of you ever got burned out being a parent? How many of you thought it ended at 18? <laughs> You don't get burned out, you suck it up. All in favor say aye. aye. Boy, I better not ever run for office, huh? This is not popular talk. Oh, if you can't pay for your student loans, we'll just forgive it. Oh, Brother John, get some character. To become amazing, you first got to decide to shoot for the moon. You got to train your eyes to see the moon. To live in amazing, you got to think amazing. It's abundance. Are you thinking that way? To live amazing, you got to partner with amazing mentors. To become amazing, you got to follow the vision map, man. The strategies, you go for it. To become amazing, you have to have amazing courage. You do it when you don't feel like it. To become amazing, you have sustained concentration. You focus and you build it on a foundation of amazing character. The plan before the foundation of the world. Is this good, everybody, or what? This is good stuff. So you know what? I want to know. Who are you? Amazing, and in order for you to be able to take a break at this moment, which we need to do, <laughs> then I want to hear everybody say, I want you to declare to everybody in this room what you're shooting for. Everybody say, I'm shooting that is right. Let's take a 15-minute break and we'll come back. Let's do it. Thank you. You are. Uh -huh. You can't take both hands off the wheel.
feel and still get far. Please swear to wait and enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. You won't 